I just have a short uh, word I'd like to share with you that I was thinking on this morning. You know, we've so many times heard the expression, your sin is under the blood. And you know, that is Old Testament mindset. You know, the scripture tells us in Leviticus that um, the priest would make an offering for sin. And this was the atonement. And you know, the word atonement means to cover, to cover over. And so that was Old Testament mindset. And when John the Baptist was baptizing at the River Jordan, and he saw Jesus coming along. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That was a radical statement because the Jewish people had never known uh, of sin being taken away. Is All they knew is on the Day of Atonement every year, they could get their sins covered by a sacrifice, and then they had to wait a whole year to get their sins covered again. And, you know, the scripture tells us in Hebrews 10 that the blood in Hebrews 10 and 4, it says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. There was no power in the sacrifice to take away sin, is all it could do was cover up sin. Jesus came to take away the sin of the whole world. By his one sacrifice, it tells us in verse 14, that by one offering, he has perfected forever those that are sanctified. Hallelujah. And you know it goes on to say, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. You know, in Philippians 3, I believe, it says that it is both God that gives us the will and the ability to do his good pleasure. It's God in you working, okay? It's God in you giving you the will and the ability. It's a God thing. God gives us the will to, to do whatever he wants us to do. And it says, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. God is not remembering any of our sins. Jesus took away all of our sins, not just the sins of the past, but sins of the past, present, and future, so that we don't have to have any consciousness of sin. And it says in verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We have boldness to enter in to the holiest place because of the blood of Jesus. And it says, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. You know, that veil was torn in two because Jesus' body was broken. He, our way into the holiest place of all has been secured by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. And it says, And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. In other words, let our hearts be totally persuaded of what Jesus Christ has come to reveal, that we are made perfect by his blood having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Now that, that uh, sprinkling, uh, there's another scripture that says, 
uh, having our um, consciences sprinkled, our, our um, evil heart sprinkled by the blood of Jesus, okay? That blood being sprinkled on our heart will uh, cleanse us from an evil conscience, or that word evil is works, labor. So what it does is the blood of Jesus speaks to our heart of a brand new way, a living way, um, which is totally opposite to works righteousness. You can never be work, uh, righteous by what you do. And it says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Let us hold on to this uh, truth that Jesus Christ came to reveal unto us. And you know, as I was meditating on this this morning, I was thinking that that sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says, For ye are not come, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, unto an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood of Jesus speaks better things to our hearts than the blood of Abel. Now, you know, I've heard so many times, and I've preached it myself in the past, uh, that what did the blood of Abel cry out? You know, when, when Cain killed his brother, um, and the Lord came to Cain, and he says, where are your brother? Where's your brother? And he says, what am I, my brother's keeper? And, and the Lord said to Cain, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. And I've heard it said, and I've said it myself, that the blood of Abel cried out vengeance. And the blood of Jesus speaks better things because the blood of Jesus cries out mercy. You know what? I don't believe that. Because Abel received the grace of God through faith. He had a smile on his face. And that's what ticked Cain off so bad. Because Cain saw that Abel's sacrifice was pleasing unto God. And it was accepted by God. And the reason Abel's sacrifice was accepted was the fact that he was offering what he offered in faith, looking unto uh, God for redemption. And he had the witness within himself that he pleased God. Just like the scripture says that Enoch had the witness within himself that he pleased God. He walked with God and he was not. And so when we have heard and we've said, you know, the blood of Abel cried out vengeance, I think we say that out of a carnal mindset, um, out of a, a heart that is feeling the pain of being killed, uh, not knowing God. But Abel knew the Lord. And it's all I could say, my heart, if somebody killed me, I would want to cry out for them for mercy. Because you know what? 
whenever people do evil, um, they're not in their right mind. They were not created to live like that. And so when people do evil things, if we look at them through the carnal mind, we will hold them responsible and feel bitter toward them. But I have to believe that Abel was not seeking vengeance for his brother killing him. He was square. He was cool. He was with the Lord. He was crying out for mercy for his brother because his brother was overtaken by jealousy and he was acting out of the seed of the serpent. And so what does the blood of Jesus speak to us? The blood of Jesus doesn't cry out mercy. The blood of Jesus cries out your value. Because the scripture tells us in Leviticus that the life is in the blood. So the blood speaks of the life. And so when I believe that Jesus Christ laid down his life and shed his blood for me, and I receive that offering of his blood into my heart, it sprinkles my heart from an evil conscience that, oh, I'm not what I ought to be because I didn't do what was right. I'm not as I ought to be because I failed. No, the blood of Jesus washes that evil conscience away because it's saying, you're worth my blood. I love you so much that you was worth every drop of my blood. When we believe in the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, it washes us of the lie that we're not valuable. And it's the truth is sealed in his own blood. Oh, that just so blessed me this morning. It just so blessed me that the Father loves us that much. And the blood of Jesus is speaking to me. He's saying, Beulah, you are worth every drop. I love you so much. And you know, the blood of Jesus is speaking that to every human being. If only they had ears to hear. But you know what? The scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got to hear this truth. What I'm telling you right now, if you listen to this kind of uh, teaching, it will cleanse your heart from a works mentality. Well, I'm just so blessed today. It's been such a long time since I've shared. I've not... Um, I've not been well, but you know what? God is so good, and I'm so thankful, and it's always such a pleasure to share his word. So when somebody says to you, oh, your sins are under the blood, realize that they are still thinking Old Testament atonement. We've got something far better than having our sins covered up. Jesus took our sins away and he threw them in the sea of forgetfulness and he remembers them no more. Well, God bless you and have an awesome evening.